Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to uh, Working Man Ron Doyle. If this is your first time uh, coming to my channel, I do walkthroughs on electrical work that was done by myself, tool reviews and how-to videos. This is a 1400 square foot home in Princess Anne, Maryland. Uh, coming through this front entrance door right here, we've got the living room area, it's right in here. Uh, we've got a uh, 36 inch door with side lights. We've got an outlet that is within six foot of the edge of the door. And we're within six foot from the edge of this door. And this is the master bedroom. This area here, uh, I've got displayed for a entertainment wall for a flat screen TV. They can install a flat screen TV in the wall box if they choose to at a later date. I've got them all in the same cavity, so that's possible. The electric and the RG6 cable. Um, this home usually has about a five foot uh, wall here, four foot high, that goes across. And the contractor on these last two houses, he's done, he hasn't done that wall, which tells me he's gonna do a peninsula and I'll put an outlet at the end of the peninsula. Uh, there is a wire that is coiled up, comes right from here, and it's coiled up underneath the house. And that is for the end of the peninsula that goes right here. Now, looking at this wall, You'll see the peninsula come through. Uh, outlet here, you'll have a range. That's my uh, range box. Range will be right in here. You have a uh, built-in microwave. This outlet will be inside the cabinet. You'll have approximately a 24 to a 30 inch cabinet right here. That's the outlet that serves it. This side right here, you'll have a uh, 12 inch cabinet. You'll have a, a 24 inch dishwasher, a 36 inch sink basin. Got an outlet that serves this side of the kitchen counter. You have to be within 24 inches from the uh, edge of the sink. This is, this is a adjustable box that is gonna be underneath the kitchen sink. And that is in case I have to isolate the GFI from the arc fault. Uh, in the past, I've had uh, three dishwashers. I had to separate the arc fault and GFI on. So, and you can also add a food disposal if you choose to on a later date. We don't, we don't do that. Uh, this outlet here is gonna be within 24 inches. You see the, uh, the block. That makes me compliant because I was stepping out of the margin of 24 inches and it was falling more to uh, 25 and a half. That's why you see a block there. The um, roofers still have to put the, uh, the uh, pipe boots on for the plumbing. The refrigerator will be here. This, this cabinet here will be approximately 36 inches. This will be the refrigerator. Refrigerator stops somewhere in here. It's a refrigerator receptacle. Got a receptacle underneath these windows. This area right in here is the dining room. Looking up, you can see a fan rated box. I do a fan rated box in the dining room areas due to some chandeliers getting really heavy if people change it out from what we installed. Coming over to this wall, this outlet's gotta be within uh, six foot from the edge of that wall to this outlet. This here is the little hallway. We have a pull down staircase. This is a smoke detector for the first floor adjacent to both bedrooms, front bedroom back bedroom to house. This is a coat closet, really small coat closet. This is a linen closet for serving the bathroom, which is right here. This is a uh, full bath. Now this, this particular hallway, in length, I did a convenience outlet. Uh, it's not really required, but uh, it does make a nice spot to plug a um, uh, night light in to illuminate this uh, at dark. They do have a pull down staircase. So we have to serve it with a light because there is heating and air equipment. This is a light switch for the uh, light in the attic. And if you look up, there's a light there. And there's a light right there. So I've got that served. Looking at these uh, bedrooms, gonna enter this, this uh, front bedroom to the house. I got a double window in the front bedroom. There has to be an outlet within six foot of the edge of this door. Now, I try to stop my outlets so that they pass the perimeter of the door. And I believe this is a 30 inch door. So the, uh, the door is gonna stop somewhere in here. You can still utilize that. Got a double door closet. Got my uh, RG6 wire here for TV, uh, power that feeds it. Now that outlet has to be within six foot from the edge of this door jam to that outlet. I'm well within that. And then that outlet to that outlet has to be within 12 foot, which I believe it's right at 10. And then that outlet to that outlet has to be within 12 foot. And then this outlet has to be within six foot from the edge of the door. And this one's fairly close. 
uh, due to this outlet. Now, number of outlets in this room, we got one, two, three, four. We got five outlets in this one room. And there is a uh, smoke detectors in these houses. We we're in um, this is considered Somerset County. There's a working smoke detector. Got uh, one sprinkler head. I do uh, fan rated boxes in all my bedrooms, the living room and the dining room. Uh, and it's only switched on a 14-2. Single gang box. Coming into this, this uh, let's do this bathroom. Got a uh, one piece fiberglass tub. Got the Braum 678 exhaust fan light combo. I do a little zigzag loop. This is a floored area. If this fan ever craps out and they want to change it in the future, they'll have a little bit of wiggle room on that wire to pull that fan through to be able to do a replacement. It's exhaust going up and you can see the flex. It goes to the back soffit area of the house. Now, coming in on my, uh, the way I wired us, a three gang box, got a 14.3 coming in here. 14.2 14, uh, 14 is the vanity light, which is right there. And this, this here is the light on the fan. And this is the exhaust fan. And then we have an outlet to serve this uh, bathroom. Now this particular house being a small house, uh, the uh, receptacles for the bathroom uh, the home run runs into the, the master bathroom and it goes to a second outlet because they got a double bowl sink and from the second outlet it ends over here. And we're going to this back bedroom. Looking up, we've got a pan rated, uh, fan rated pancake. Got a uh, single gang box. This first receptacle has to be within six foot from the door. And six foot is somewhere, somewhere over in here. So I'm um, under six foot. And one thing I... I want to show you all that I do on the RG6 cable <clears throat> is uh, I pop the knockouts out. Some people call them knockouts, but they're actually uh, uh, wire holding devices. And uh, the inspectors look for these on the floor. And uh, some of your, uh, some of you uh, newer electricians, homeowners, uh, aren't aware that this is actually a wire holding device. If you can see, it's actually cut on a wedge shape angle. It's fairly sharp. These will cut you, um, but sliding them in. See if give you a better perspective of that. You can see I actually left that one in to put two wires. These these boxes are approved for uh, two wires entering uh, one hole. As long as this is is left in place as wire holding device, you slide each side of your wire on the other side of that that wire holding device. Uh, try not to break these out. Now this particular case where it's an RG6 uh, low voltage cable uh, doesn't really matter. Now after sheetrock goes up, I'll be able to reach my hand in here. And grab this wire you can see it moving at the bottom i can pull it out do my connections with my cover plate and i'll coil that wire in a circle and i'll insert it into the box so i i, I leave as much wire on there as possible but uh pay attention not to uh, break your uh, wire holding devices out that outlet to that outlet is within 12 and that one to that one is within 12 and if you notice this from the corner of this uh, jam on this double closet it has to be within six foot from that jam, and that outlet accounts for that. And then we have an outlet that is going to land behind a door. This wall is over 24 inches. Um, code requirement: you have to have an outlet uh, on any wall that's over 24, and that's point of door to point of door. So if you can imagine, your trim would be here, about an inch out, corner of that door to the corner of this door is over 24. So I have to put an outlet there to account the, for the code. This room has a smoke detector, a sprinkler. And we're walking out to this hallway. Now we're looking at the master bedroom. This particular house has the uh, panel in the master bedroom. Now this is, a, this is a master bedroom closet. We have an overhead light. We do have a sprinkler. We've got a, uh, a light switch for the overhead light. This wall here is over 24 inches. Technically, I have to have an outlet here. This outlet is not going to get used that much. This door opens against that wall. This is going to be covered up 90% of the time. But to code, I have to have it. This wall here has to have an outlet. And from this corner to here, I'm within six foot. This is the master bathroom. And then from that outlet to that outlet, I have to be within 12 foot. And then from that one, to that one I have to be within 12 and then that one to that one I have to be within 12 of course like like I said within six foot 
from the edge of the door. TV's going on this wall, RG6 coming down. Same thing, break the knockouts out, insert it, and I put a staple, put a staple at the bottom to uh, hold the wire. If you don't install this staple, what can happen has happened to me in the past if I forget to put one in. The drywallers will put the sheetrock up. That wire will get pinched behind that sheetrock. And you can imagine you're reaching your hand in this box to pull this out. And you find yourself in a predicament where it's stuck. And it is pinched, and usually it's pinched good, like that, pinched with sheetrock. Um, you, you will play around with this for a while trying to get that out. Uh, and you'll take your hand and rub your hand down the wall. You'll feel a lump in the sheetrock. You'll know that they've pinched the wire. So, uh, hey, recommendation from Ron Doyle. Put a staple at the bottom. Put it loose enough that that wire will pull out when you put your hand in this box to do your connections. We're coming over to this panel. This, uh, like I said, this is in the master bedroom. This is a uh, square D home line, 3060. We've got a couple wire poles. We've got one wire pole going underneath the house. That is for the condensing unit. It's going to sit on this back corner. Now, one thing that I noticed that uh, Square D did, this plastic color has changed. It's now black. It used to be gray. We've got our uh, 200 amp main breaker in place. We've got uh, two breakers. Uh, they, they break the knockouts out of these panels, so I have to fill both spaces to fill, uh, fill them in and so that it passes a rough inspection. Uh, this this uh, breaker here is what's feeding for temporary power for outside outlets. Got almost all of our wire overhead or overhead poles. You see they're nailed to the uh, staple to the side of the joist. And we've got our RG6 wires right there, and they're coming down. And they go, they penetrate, they penetrate through the wall. It's going in this uh, master bathroom here. Got one piece fiberglass though. They do have a sprinkler. You can see uh, I got my wire coiled up. It looks like it drooped down a little bit. That is for the air handler which is going to be up in the attic space. You can see the uh, HVAC guys have already prepped it. I need to uh, I need to push that up a little higher so it doesn't get pinched in sheetrock. Uh, we have a slide rail box. It's going to have a uh, six six light single bar uh, bar light going over this uh, double bowl vanity. Double bowls because we got two taps from the plumber for a drain line and water hookup. Got uh, the main outlet. It's going to be a geophyte this location. It feeds it feeds up, feeds over and down. Have an outlet over here to serve this side of the counter. Now coming in, same thing as the other bathroom, we're going to have a vanity light. Vanity light is on a slide rail that can be adjusted if need be, but it's it's the center of the space from there to there. The second switch is going to be the uh, light on exhaust fan and the exhaust fan. And that is located in this business room area. You figure out what that's for. Here's your fart fan. This bathroom has a linen closet right in here. You know, leaving this kind of backtracking here. Uh, this is your this is your little hall. Uh, this is going to be a kitchen pantry. This is the exterior door going to the back deck. This here is your dryer. This is going to be your washing machine. This is your light that is serving the laundry room. Got a nail on box right there. Your water heater is going to go in this location right here. Got a 10-2 wire for the water heater. They've got the riser pipe coming up for the sprinkler system. Their connection is going to be in this room coming through this floor. Now, do a little walk outside here on the back deck. Cross space door is right there. Now, this house does not have any heating and air equipment underneath of it. So I do not have to supply it. Oh, the cardboard's all folded up on me. But I do have, I don't know if you can see it, there is a wire loop that comes down from the outside receptacles right there. But there is, and that wire that you see hanging right there, that's for the end of the peninsula. But there is no heating and air equipment under here. So no outlets, no lights are required under this crawl space. There's another home we're getting ready to start right there. This is the side of the house. 
we've got our four RG6 cables coming in and I do need to put silicone around that this is a Milbank 200 amp meter socket they are getting very hard to uh, to find right now due to COVID and back orders got our uh, number four alt coming in got it sealed with duct seal got a fiber bushing got a TA coming through and a lock nut to hold it all in place y'all um, I don't know if you all have heard but we are definitely going through some shortages right now we've got this front door area we got a uh, outlet to serve the front we do have an overhead light which is right there and one thing I forgot to say we do have a doorbell look at it right here left side of the door that's the back of the outlet it's an Arlington uh, Heavy duty in use box, vertical with white lead. The other outlet serves the back deck area. Now, this outlet can also be classified a service outlet for the heating and air equipment. Uh, heating and air equipment, the condensing unit, is going to be located right there, outside the uh, outside the wall. So that outlet right there has to be within 25 feet of the heating and air equipment for it to count as a serviceable outlet. So we're good on that now. Heating and air equipment. Uh, the heating and air is going to be located somewhere up in this attic, somewhere up in here, and I have to serve it with a receptacle. So what I've got is a line tagged from the master bedroom, travels up right here, goes across, and it feeds that location right there. That is a 1900 box with a uh, outlet face on it. So that is an AFCI protected outlet. It is tamper proof. The uh, new code for 2020, we're not, we're still on the uh, 2017 code for this house, but the 2020 code, uh, the new and updated code, uh, every outlet, no matter where it's at in the house, has to be uh, tamper resistant. And if you look to the side of it, you see a transformer. And that's my uh, doorbell transformer. Doorbell location is gonna be right here. So we've got a 18-3 uh, going up to that transformer right there. And then we have an 18-2 wire, which is right there. And it also travels up to that transformer. And uh, you do your connections right at the transformer location. Now, if you notice here, some inspectors frown upon this. I don't know, see how well you can see this. If you see what I've done, I've side screwed that box on both of these. And not having room to put a physical staple in, I've used zip ties with eyelets to, uh, on an angle to be able to get a screw in to secure these wires. I've got three in this location. I've got one there, one there, and one there. Due to not having a clearance in between here, um, something on this house got screwed up. I'm not sure if it was on the print or what, but looking back at this, that door stay, stay shut long enough for me. If you look at this wall, this door jam, this door frame is supposed to be centered in this wall. This space ended up getting large. That space ended up getting small. Don't know what happened, but uh, I rolled with what I had. So the top switch is going to be your outside light, which was cut by the vinyl siding guy. It's kind of sloppy. That may have to be redone if it's uh, if you can see the uh, exposure on that. And this switch here is a three-way switch from switched from this location to that location right there. Now, the other switch that's at this location is going to be for the fan on that light. You know, going Looking over from, from this door jam to this door jam, I split the two uh, from right side to left side. This uh, first switch that you see here is going to be for the uh, dining room. I'm sorry, this one is the kitchen cans, and it's three-way switched from this location to that location right there. And this other switch is for the dining room light. Dining room table will be somewhere in this location. <clears throat> and going back to this this back door, this uh, switch that I got on this, I got it on this side. It's for the outside light at that location. Of course, there's your receptacle for the deck area. The uh, this light here is for this hall. This light here is going to be a three-way switch, like I said, from here all the way over to there, and that is for the kitchen cans. 
there are six cans in this kitchen. And if you look, these are these are not lined up. These two are. That one's offset. These two are lined up, and that one's offset. The reason why I offset these ceiling cans in this configuration, these ceiling cans from wall to center are 32 and a half inches out to there. The refrigerator sits right here. I do not want the ceiling can, the light, to shine down on the refrigerator. If I put them in line with each other, which they are not, if I were to put them in line, all of your light would be lost on the top of the refrigerator, and I do not want that. So I've staggered that can and that can, so the measurement between center to center on those two cans are the same. The center of these measurements are the same, and the center of those measurements are the same. This light's also gonna get shifted out. You can imagine there's gonna be a peninsula here. So that should serve us just about right for illuminating this kitchen. Uh, I've done probably probably 15 or 20 of these houses uh, with this configuration. So, uh, oh, and this is our, this is our thermostat. But uh, today is uh, Memorial Day, 2022, and I want to shoot a little quick video for you. Uh, working man Ron Doyle's got to work on the Memorial Day. Uh, my schedule is getting really, uh, really full, jammed up. Contractor expects me to get a certain amount of work done, so uh, I'm gonna shoot a little quick video for you. Uh, and uh, I, I wish you all a wonderful and blessed day. Um, I hope that uh, all the veterans that are watching this, uh, thank you for your service uh, to our country, and. Uh, Wish you all a wonderful and blessed day.